Equinix is a, uh, a you know really a global data center provider. But what, like what we'd like to say is that Equinix powers uh, and, and connects the companies that connect your world. So while we may not be a brand that sort of rolls off people's tongue in terms of a powerhouse digital brand, um, you know we actually our data centers around the world play a critical part of enabling the companies that you rely on every day. I just heard you guys talking about Netflix and their uh, price target raise on Netflix, and uh, that's uh, for example all of the Fang companies are. are customers of ours um, and Netflix is a, is a great customer and one that uses our data centers around the world to place their infrastructure and able to uh, allow them to deliver the seamless high quality customer experience so that uh, folks can binge watch their programs. So what what actually went on with how long you been your, your this is your first interview what what, what actually went uh, were the ramifications or the, the circumstances of Mr. Smith's departure? Yeah, you know, we don't, uh, the, the company actually has not provided, provided either internally or publicly details uh, on the matter. But uh, what I would say is, you know, there was a period of some anxiety there, as you might expect, um, uh, with a, a transition like that. Um, but I think uh, we were very fortunate, the company was, in terms of being able to have Peter Van Camp, our chairman and uh, our former CEO, uh, step into the role, very stabilizing force. Um, and, uh, you know, he asked the team and uh, to really get focused on the plan that we already had in place. And I uh, think the, the business has continued to perform very well over that period. And, and then the board really undertook over the nine months or so that uh, Peter was in the chair a couple of key things uh, really to, you know, one, look at, the, at, the, at our culture, in particular our leadership culture, in terms of, you know, the, uh, the values and behaviors and operating norms of the, of the leadership. And, uh, and then also undertake a CEO search uh, to find uh, the right person with the right experience and capabilities and, and leadership composition to lead the company going forward. And uh, I'm delighted to have uh, come out of that process and uh, be leading the company in this next chapter. So the, the uh, I mean, obviously he was a kind of a charismatic and pop, popular leader. You're continuing along the same um, uh, path, I guess, as Mr. Smith, but just not in the poor judgment in employee matters or something. Is that the, have I got that right? That was, uh, that was the phrase that was used indeed. And uh, I, I would say that, you know, again, Steve led the company through a very successful period of time, uh, highly admired uh, inside and outside right. the company in many respects. And, and uh, I, you know, I think in terms of continuing the execution and, and uh, strategy of the company and moving it forward, I uh, absolutely want to build on that success. And, uh, but we, uh, you know, I think we're very excited. We, I, I addressed the team last week and talked about um, the culture and uh, our commitment to that culture and, and my commitment as CEO to make sure that every employee uh, in our company can confidently say, I'm safe, I belong, and I matter. And uh, we have an amazing culture that is uh, you know, critical to our success and has been central to our ability to attract and retain yeah. talent. And, and uh, we're going to continue to focus on that. When you're looking for a, a location for a server farm, what, 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 how, do you, how do you choose? What, 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 is it as simple as yeah. the physical? Like, do you think about the weather? Do you think about the... Uh, terrain? How does it work? Yeah, I would say that actually the, the primary factor that drives the, our site selection in terms of the markets that we serve is really our customer requirements for, for connectivity and sort of where the digital, uh, you know, sort of um, economy interconnects. And, uh, and so we have, uh, we are, we're in 52 markets around the world. Um, and the focus for us is being uh, proximate to the fiber routes and to the network providers that are going to allow our customers to deliver the kinds of services they they need. In terms of physical site selection, though, uh, there are factors around, you know, around weather and, and seismic activity and various other things um, that influence how we, uh, how we site a data center. Yeah, I can imagine. It. Any of this, uh, what's happening with, with the trade dispute, uh, anything with China that, that uh, is pertinent to talk about with you today? Well, not so much in terms of, you know, uh, since we're more of a services company, um, you know, the, the tariffed items, uh, uh, you know, would have relatively limited impact in terms of our cost of goods. I, I think the impact is more around the overall sentiment of customers in terms of how they're thinking about, you know, sort of the uh, overall global economy and their expansion plans and those kind of things. But it, it's very interesting in that Equinix tends to be somebody who can really help them regardless of how those things play out because of our 
our global footprint. We operate in 52 markets in 24 countries around the world. And so if people need to shift their expansion plans based on their assessment of the implications of tariffs or trade tensions, um, you know, we can help them, whether that's into uh, Western Europe or a pan, a pan Asian strategy or whatever their, uh, whatever their global expansion strategy might be, uh, we're there to help.